This is Think Tech Hawaii. Community matters here. Aloha and bienvenido to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm Richard Concepcion. Today's guest is Manuel Baez. He retired from the military, from the Army, as a warrant officer after 20 years of service. Now he's a professional actor who works in many films here in Hawaii. He is an inspiration, and he's here to share with us his personal experience, his transition from the military to civilian, and his future plans. Bienvenido. Gracias por estar aquí con nosotros. Gracias. Un placer de estar aquí. All right. First of all, I, I want to say thank you for your service, as we have already served <laughs> in the same unit and actually deployed into Iraq. Um, I can honestly say this is an honor to be here, and I'm just so grateful for everything that you're doing for local actors. I think that uh, it is important that we take the lead in wanting to do things that are positive and, and let people know that the military is not the end, that there's still more that we can do and, and we can promote just community. And in this case, Acting. I seen acting. All right. <laughs> so, so let's talk about you being in the military. Here's yes. some picture from when you first time came in until oh, the goodness. time that you retired. Tell me Good about yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your military experience and uh, how how was that transition from the military to civilian? Well, to be to be quite honest, <laughs> I went in the military um, with the intent of only doing three years as an infantryman and uh, went to basic training and it was just, it was too easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I, I, I well, say, I can see why, right? <laughs> you're, you're in good shape. <laughs> so definitely there was a foundation in the background, right? Um, I got to thank my father for his uh, strict upbringing. You know, being from the Dominican Republic, um, we tend to be a little bit more stringent in the way we're supposed to True. conduct ourselves. and. It's just one of those things. So upon going into basic training, things were pretty simple. And uh, as time went by, I was like, you know what? This is actually pretty easy. I think I can go ahead and re-enlist and, and so forth. Now, <laughs> once, uh, <laughs> once it started going to Iraq, that's when things got a little real. So went uh, twice as an infantryman and uh, earned the Covet and uh, Combat Infantry uh, badge. And uh, I figured, you know what, it's time for me to change over and do something, something greater, I suppose. But really, it was because <laughs> I wanted to <laughs> keep my mom calm. You know, I love my mother to death. And uh, we come from a very strong and honor spiritual believing um, background. And we believe that uh, with faith, everything is always possible. And, um, and safety being one of those. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> but do you still miss the military? You, you know, when I look back at those days, um, there, there are some things I miss. There's some things. Um, I'm not going to say that I miss it completely. I, I feel that at the point that I uh, chose to retire, because I, I had a choice. I could have continued going or, or just stayed in. But um, I think God had called me that it was time for me to exit out and you know what it was it was awesome <laughs> after i became a warrant officer i went three more times to iraq yeah so, I remember so that we were together <laughs> and we were together in a yeah, couple of those yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you know I, I think it was definitely time to start a new endeavor and and i tell you that that in itself um we we try to plan things and control how we want to and what we want to do when we That's exit true. out. And, uh, you know, sometimes it doesn't work out that way. And uh, upon retiring, you know, they had the uh, the sequestration. So for like eight months, I believe. I do remember that. Oh. <laughs> so for like eight Difficult months. Time. <laughs> yes, it was kind of tough because I'm like, okay, uh, I love living in Hawaii, but uh, how am I going to make this? And uh, Very expensive, yeah. And, and again, you know, I had to humble myself and, talk to God and ask him, hey, so <laughs> what do I do right now? And I, and I believe that, you know, things really do happen for a reason. Because um, I was working out at, um, at the 24-hour fitness in Pearl City here. And uh, some of the people that knew me from then, they were like, hey, uh, so we, we see that you're getting ready to exit from the military. And we need a presence like yours here, you know, a leadership that could... 
I suppose mentor other people and just bring out a different uh, crowd or clientele, if you will. And uh, what ended up happening, I became a personal trainer within uh, less than two years. I became a master trainer. So you see, even though it's a new career path, I'm still excelling, still trying to do the best I can because that was the motto when you and I went in the yeah, military. Yeah, never, never ended. You're right, always right? progressing. You're, You're always progressing. You have, to be, stop. <laughs> you have to be the best you can be, right? True. Be all you can be. Be all you can be. I remember exactly. the motto. That was the motto. <laughs> be all you can be. So what is your advice to those who's getting ready to retire from the military? My advice is that um, don't stop believing. Don't stop believing. Whatever dreams you've had, any, any, anything that you felt at a younger age, even before you went into the military, don't forget those dreams because those dreams are still significant for what's to come, it's still a possibility. For me, my dreams, I wanted to be <laughs> an action star. You know, I used to watch movies <laughs> like Commando, you know, Rambo. I'm like, wow, you know, I can do that. Little did I know that as time went by, look what I did in the military. So, you know, you start thinking, well, maybe I was just gonna do this for real and not just the movies. But uh, things took a different twist. Um, Meeting good people in the gym, um, they actually, uh, and, and in fact, I'll, I'll go ahead and give her credit. Her name is Minnie Kwan. Uh, she's no longer on island, but uh, thanks to her and, and actually asking me, how do you feel about doing stunts? That's how it started. So we went and did some stunts with a uh, local uh, stunt team, the Ninja Monkeys. All the right, Ninja guys. Monkeys. The Ninja Monkeys. Yeah, I heard that yes, name before. Yes. <laughs> so we went over there, and um, you know they liked what I had to bring to the table, and uh, they indoctrinated me into the team. So eventually, uh, one day they were like, "Hey, you know, we are getting ready to uh, film this movie. Would you like to be a part of it?" And I'm like, "Sure, <laughs> why not?" Know, right? That's, that's my here's, dream. Here's right? the start, right? Wow. I'm like, "What do I gotta lose?" Right? Okay. Who knows? I like to. Uh, another, you know what? Another advice: It's okay to take risks as long as it's not a a risk where you're endangering yourself. But to take a risk for a career path, who knows? I mean, I to me, I felt like acting could be a hobby because I really loved what I was doing. There was a passion igniting there. So to be invited to be a part of a production, I'm like, whoa! I'm living my dream now. So the same day that we went to shoot, and I was just playing an extra, I was playing this, this uh, uh, bodyguard to a boss, and you know, <laughs> I'm just kind of sort of in the back, but it was still fun, you know, even though not so much, but still it was fun. Yeah, I remember those days of being an extra, a lot of work, but it's fun. <laughs> it's still fun. <laughs> well, you can see we're showing right here about Hawaii Fi-O. Oh, I, I know you're telling me this story, but now that we have this picture oh, yes. frame right here about Hawaii Fi-O, oh, uh, let's talk about how Wi-Fi and you and you experienced uh, during the the shooting and and that reality that just hit you. You know, become an actor and and it's such a big uh, production. Tell me about it, Richard. Let me tell you that was that was definitely like the climatic point in my career because never that I thought I would be on national TV, international at that. And now That's true. and now webbed. You know, now everybody gets to see this. And it, it was a surreal experience. I am so grateful for the, um, the Ohana casting um, who took the opportunity to select me and be part of you know, their production. And to be honest, I, I just went over there for <laughs> an audition. I submitted some paperwork. And see, that's the other thing, too. You, you got to be motivated to push the limits because um, when I heard that they were recruiting people, extras, I was like, ah. I really don't want to do extras. I kind of sort of just did this role in Popolo, by the way. So. Yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I played yes. this, I, I play this <laughs> starting role, and I'm like, do I really want to do extra? But then I, I had to realize, you know what, I got I to gotta diversify regardless. So I saw the email, and I said, you know what, I'm going to send them everything that I've done, and hopefully that'll do something. So I sent them my reel, uh, sent them my resume, and pictures, of course, and... They called me in within like two days. Went over there, spoke to the casting uh, directors, and they were like, uh, yep, uh, can you come in? So <laughs> went over there, spoke to them, did my lines, and 
uh, about three days later, I get the phone call, and they were like, um, we're sorry to tell you, but um, you didn't get the role that you auditioned for. And I was like, oh, okay. However, there was no but. However. They would say, however. <laughs> yes. So something is so coming. I knew something's coming. I'm like, oh, yes. However, um, we're going to give you the lead role of the villain. I was like, and what was wow. the feeling? What was the feeling at that time when, however, and then that came to you? I mean, of like, course, you know, my heart is pounding out of my chest. because I said like, yes oh, immediately? Of course. <laughs> I said yes without even thinking about, hey, you know, you're going to have to make some adjustments to your schedule and all of this. Of course. <laughs> I was just like, yes, I want that right now. And they were like, okay, golden, we start tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, okay, no problem. I'll be there. It, well, it, it tell, me about, tell me about the, the main characters when you first time show up, you know, getting ready for the roles, you know, how, how they receive you. Well, you know, I, I think in this case, um, at least for Hawaii Five O, you know, I play the role of this, uh, <laughs> you know, I, we got to play the role. You got to play matter. the role. Yeah. <laughs> it's not hurting anybody, I believe. But uh, I played uh, the role of Hector Frontera, and he was this uh, drug dealer, you know, creating a channel for, you know, between Central America and Hawaii. I mean, this, this guy is, he's like moving some big stuff, okay. big money, and, and whoever gets in the way, they're going to get it. And, and pretty much uh, when you watch this episode, um, and by the way, season seven, episode three. Uh, <laughs> don't miss it. You know, don't miss it, right? <laughs> but when you watch this episode, you, you understand what's happening. Um, although I didn't get to uh, have a speaking role, when I spoke to the directors, what they were saying was, you know what, it's actually more difficult to divert information when you're not speaking, but we believe that with your mannerisms, your, your body language, you'll be able to process very well what we need you to do. So I was like, okay, he's Hector Frontera, a drug dealer, you know what, I think I've seen many, uh, you know, I've seen some yeah, Scar Faces, <laughs> New Jack City. We see a lot of those movies already. You know, I've seen plenty of movies like that, so I'm like, I think I can play that. Okay. And, I, and I'll put a little twist of, uh, of some Spanish, you know, maybe yeah, some yeah, yeah. salsa in there, you know. <laughs> so it worked out, it worked out. Well, that's good for you, that's a great inspiration. Yes. But I want to ask you, uh, how do you prepare for the role? So in preparation for the role, um, I like to, depending on what it is, of course, I mean, if I'm going to have some speaking parts and naturally, I like to rehearse those and go over and over again. And um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I learned to do was to write it out, write it out so that way it'll become more naturally fluid. Um, the other thing is, I, I remember one of the, um, <laughs> one of the things that, one of the main actors for Popolo had told me, and that's Quante Love. He has said, you know, Manny, for you, all you have to do is be you. And, and I believe that when you receive a niche and how can you promote or speak a word or perform an action, you have to be able to reach down and, and recognize that you can do this. And I think that for me, that's what did it. It was knowing the fact that by me being who I am and understanding the different parameters of communication, I could do the part. So I'm not going to say that it was simple, <laughs> simple preparation, but uh, I think just being aware of the roles that you're playing and just being diversified, you know, being able to um, movies, watching movies, watching soap operas, uh, commercials, all these things play a role in how you conduct yourself whenever you trying to catch on to that character. Yeah, that, that is true. You accomplish so much, and that's <laughs> why we have you here, because you're an inspiration. Thank but you. But we are going to take a quick break, and we're going to come by and continue talking story with Manuel Paez, a professional actor here in Hawaii. We'll be right back. You can be the greatest, you can be the best You can be the king, come banging on your chest You can beat the world, you can beat the war You can talk to God, go banging on his door You can throw your hands up, you can beat the clock You can move a mountain, you can break rocks You can be a master, don't wait for luck Dedicate yourself and you can find yourself Hello, 
everyone. I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. Uh, welcome back to Hispanic Hawaii. I'm here with Manuel Baez, a professional actor. We're talking story about Hawaii Pio. Got that right. <laughs> <laughs> All yes. right, thank you so much for what you do. And listen, I want to ask you, uh, so you were telling me about how you memorized the role. Did you ever forget your lines when you perform it? Well, I mean, I, I think there is definitely a, bi a bitter reality in that. Uh, <laughs> Um, there's been some moments, you know, forget the lines, and it's like, uh, line? <laughs> and it's like, you got to recap again, you know. But uh, uh, I think that my advice is remain calm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because the moment you get too excited about that, and it's like, oh, I can't believe I just forget. You know, don't panic. It's, it's more of a line. And once you get the line, then recollect yourself and say it out loud. So I think staying calm is always important. You know, that's what we did in the yep. military. You know, under stress. That's a great advice. Whatever happens, <laughs> stay calm. Remember the whole tactical patience thing. It's like, oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I would say that that's one of the things that um, I apply in all and everything. And everything. And everything. So do you apply the same principle when you do a stunt? And tell me about what training you do as a stuntman. You know, Richard, I, I honestly, I think being an infantryman prepared me for <laughs> all the Everything. stunts. And then being able to actually perform it in live action as many times as I did downrange, um, I think uh, stunts is, is kind of a simple task. I think, well, I don't want to put it too well, simple. Well, a lot of people but, have to take know, classes to learn, but, right? You know, classes, um, and, and the thing is just go for it. That's the thing. When you don't, the minute you hesitate in doing a particular action, if you don't understand, like for instance, how to fall, that's a big one. How to roll, big ones. I mean, you'd be surprised how many people don't know how to tumble. Oh, wow. So, those are things that you want to make sure you understand because in any action film or even just drama film, you know, you might have to break a fall. So, you might need to practice those things. You don't want to catch a fall with your hand, break a wrist break an elbow and arm, and I, I believe the more you practice, the better you get at it. So suggest uh, if you can find <laughs> a place where you can learn stunts, definitely, definitely take advantage of, of learning as much as you can because it, it can be useful, helpful, um, and even, you know, just, just um, techniques on how to fight, what to do when you're on camera, how you're supposed to throw a punch. I mean, you can't throw... <laughs> You can sell a punch, you know, but do you really want to throw a real punch, right? So, you know, you, there's certain things that you have to be um, aware of on how, how to perform in front of a camera. So, for me, I think that, it's, that it's was all huge. Natural. It's all natural, <laughs> yes. I'll all... stay away from you then, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can be my bodyguard, hopefully, right? <laughs> well, you know, if I have to, yes, yes. All right. I'm qualified, I believe. <laughs> Let, let's talk about the, the marketing point of view, right? I say uh, actor here in Hawaii and Latino. Uh, how difficult yeah. uh, to be able to find a job? You know, I, I think just like anything else in life and when it comes to jobs, it, it does have its challenges and, and sometimes it's just being at the right place and the right time and boom, it's like you connect, right? And you start your network. Um, it, I think it's important that as, as um, up and coming actors, we remain as humble as possible. And, and what I mean by that is, you know, we can't be demanding so much when we haven't even started crafting what we want to become one day. So I think we had to just make sure that no matter what set, no matter what production, you always keep yourself humble because there's always more to learn. And I think that that's one of the most important um, features that as an actor we need to have. We, we have to be able to comprehend what needs to be learned and how we need to behave 
um, when we start looking at the marketing, uh, I guess, strategy, it can be challenging. I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. It can be it's very challenging. Years. Because yeah. uh, I've been acting now for almost four years. Um, I've been on six productions, and I think it's pretty good. Well, t <laughs> tell me more about those productions. Yeah, I want to yeah, know. Yeah. You're keeping a secret. Tell me. Tell me. <laughs> I want to know those productions. So, you know, it, it's it's been it's been nice and like i said what i've learned about each one of those is the fact that being at the right place at the, at right, the right time, time. and being able to communicate and just being good people it's it's almost like the golden rule you know treat others as you would want to be treated and i think that that's been a great help i, I thank god that <laughs> i learned that kind of early in, in my early life, life you know? right? <laughs> but let's go back to that yes. question i want you to tell me some of you uh, uh production T tell so, me some of those productions so now. yes uh, <laughs> so my main first production main one was um popolo and that was a feature film independent film and uh that was with director Ero natasha uh and quante love and i will tell you uh wow such an honor to be part of that because every single person, every crew, every cast, were all local. And um, it was surreal. It was surreal. I never thought I'd be in a feature film off the bat from playing a quick extra film, you know. And by the way, that extra film um, for that short was uh, Battle of the Minions 3, still in um, post-production. However, moved on from there you see it's, it's, it's stepping a process stones. It's, yes, a process. it's a process yeah. it's definitely a it's process it's not like you want to make a movie today and it's and going to be out it. tomorrow exactly <laughs> it is a major process so again it, it comes back to that patience and it comes uh to, to that point of being a humble person and just go with the flow you know you said it earlier sometimes <laughs> we just got to go with the flow so uh that's what ended up happening so from popolo um i went to another short film and web series so one of them the web series is paradise justice that was actually pretty cool um i get to play a detective and um i want to send much props to sean mcbride thank you thank you for making me part of your production he's been quite amazing he's another entrepreneur who's producing um, web series, other films, and he's, he's up and coming as well. See, there's a lot it's of, a lot of there's so here much Hawaii, talent right? here in Hawaii, and it's like, oh. You just got to put it together. Yes, <laughs> yes, we got to put it together, and we just have to do our best to be a part of that, because see, that's the other part of it. How can you be a collaborator within the film industry, especially locally? You know, I mean, it's already a challenge in itself. We're so far away from Hollywood, and there's so many aspiring directors, producers, actors, crews, you know, we have to think about how can we collaborate together? How can we make that happen? I mean, you know, Hollywood comes over here, uses what they can find, and and it's like, all right, so eh, I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, they leave and we stay here. <laughs> Don't leave me, you know, I want to be part of this. <laughs> um, but uh, so let's see, so it was Paradise Justice, then... Um, did another short film, uh, Ninja EX. That is a horror film with a little bit of action, martial arts, and um, that was actually pretty cool, pretty good. too. Oh, yes. It's one that you was working as a pirate. Okay, then so we have... Tell, tell me about that. Tell me. <laughs> so no, don't leave that one out. <laughs> oh, I, I won't, I won't. I promise I won't. <laughs> so then, uh, yes, I was a pirate, in, um, and the name of this... Uh, film still in post-production um it's foo island and um it's also by sean i tell you man is busy he is making <laughs> it happen um i played the role of santiago de la marca i actually wow, came up with that name, yeah, huh? good name. <laughs> <laughs> perfect for you yes so santiago de la marca you know i thought about being this uh spaniard pirate you know and and in this island uh we have different factions different pirates from different location and they're all fighting to find this um treasure where it is the fountain of youth but what keeps happening in this island is every day they relive everything that happens just, in just a different way because what happened is all these pirates came to this island and now they can't get out <laughs> I, I can't wait to see that oh, movie. Oh, I tell you. <laughs> well, you work in one more production right now. So right now, so, I'm... Without tell the secret about this production, just tell me just a little bit about that. Okay, okay. So, yes, um, 
uh, working again with Mr. Edo Natasha and Quante Love, and um, this one is called Devata, and, and I think this is going to be very epic. Um, it's going to be a series of films, so there's going to be different parts, oh. and uh, I think the cool thing about this is uh, I play the role of a monk. <laughs> I, I, I can see it. Well, you know, I guess, yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's being an actor, right? you yes. be able to perpetrate yes. anything and everything. That's right. So I'll be playing a role of a monk uh, who has uh, martial arts skill. I'm actually taking training right now for that, to okay. be fighting like a monk. And I will tell you, um, the challenge there is, act, I mean, to be a monk is you have to change a lot of your... Behaviors. Behaviors, because it, it has to be a peaceful outpouring, but at the same time, it has to be a direct outpouring. So, that for you personality. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So that's, um, we, should start, should, we should be starting some shooting here pretty soon, um, and, and just grateful to be part of another production. Um, and, and then, you know, with the people who got me started into the whole industry, I, I just... I couldn't ask for more. It's truly a blessing. It's truly a blessing to be part of that. And then to portray such a character. I mean, I'm going to school right now, getting my master's in Christian ministry. Not that I have a calling in becoming a pastor or anything. And but that's what I want to ask you. What is the future for you? So, so you know, for me, I, I, I chose to go that route because after going through a whole military career and, my goodness, five deployments... Five times Iraq, I'm like, okay, hold up a second. A lot of praying. The, the, a lot of praying, yeah, yeah. right? So I'm like, uh, yeah, I want to learn a little bit more about God. And instead of just going to learn another skill set, you know, I, I want to I wanna learn about God who I feel is in control of our lives and, and setting us straight and what we need to do and how we need to follow and what our calling is and how we are to help one another. And, you know, so many times people ask me, well, what makes you a believer, you know, and why did you chose that route? Why did, why did you go to school to be there? Are you going to be a pastor? And I'm like, you know what? It's not that I, that I want to become a pastor. It's just that I want to learn about God so that I can better intelli intelligently be able to talk about God and understand the biblical principles that many people, you know, have different uh, opinions about it. And, and I think it's important that as... As we continue to learn, you know, with the whole theology side and understanding faith, um, we give the respect to the people to, to see that it's not about me introducing my belief into your life. It's not about that. It's about the love that he actually has for us and how we're supposed to work with one another. You know, nobody would believe no, me no, if no, I was to tell them, but, yeah. you know, when they see me, they're like, wow. I knew there was something different about you. <laughs> that is that true. That is impressive. <laughs> well, we, we have about yeah. a minute left. Okay. I would like to know what is your final thoughts and recommendation and advice to the viewers. Well, I, I, I want to I wanna tell you something. I think that the best thing you can do is, is just be humble. Be willing to learn. Be aggressive in your learning. But... Um, be patient. At the same time, and I think this is huge, believe in your dreams. <laughs> because if you don't believe in your dreams, you know, you, you'll be in a state of, of trance, trying to figure out where is it that you want to go in life and what is it that you want to be, what it, you know, where do you fit in? Believe. You have to believe in something. <laughs> because if there's no belief, what else is there? Well, I want to say thank you yes. so much for sharing <laughs> with us you your for personal experience, here. your thank recommendations. You. Yes. And I want to say uh, thank you so much for watching uh, Hispanic Hawaii. And don't forget that you can rewatch this program at Think Tech Hawaii and many other programs. Gracias y hasta luego.